Good afternoon. Any medium, I think, is, uh, is what we're talking about. So I'm going to talk about human terrain. And my definition of human terrain is something drawn on a human, but very specifically a map. So the title was A Closer Look, so I figured, be literal, um, a zoom in macro look, because if you look at your hand, it is a map. Then you draw a map on it, you've got inception level mapping. So <laughs> what is human terrain? So it is a series that I started nine years ago, and I've drawn 91 of them now. So it is a map drawn on the body directly, and then I photograph it a lot. Um, so this particular one was circling the entire body and took eight hours to draw, and it's set in India. So the person gets the choice of where their map is, and often the story is very personal, and I'll touch on that. So why? <laughs> Most people ask me that when I tell them what I do. This was the very first one I drew. And it was kind of an idea that a photographer said, some of my maps drawn on wood look like skin tone. And I just thought they were being... He was not the best photographer to talk about drawing on nudes because he wanted a different perspective. So I tried it thinking, that'll be a one-off. So that was the finished piece. I thought, eh, it's kind of a map, it's okay. But someone saw it and said, can you do that on me? It's like, oh, this is a thing. It's not just a one-off. Maybe I should do it. Um, so then it's like, okay, well now how do I actually map a person? So I went from doing it one off to studying and researching. So this is a map set in Australia, and I studied Melbourne, I don't know if Anton's in the room, and figured out what a map could look like. And the only reason I've put up there is I take between 700 and 1200 photographs of each map. So if you imagine a map on your arm, and then you move your arm, the map has now changed. The landscape has changed. The terrain has altered. Um, one of the things I wanted to do in this talk is include things that people have said to me, because it's a little bit of a weird art form. And some of the people that have gone through it have said very validating and rewarding things. Um, I've only asked two people if I can draw on them. And that was one of them's response, which, OK, thank you. So what am I doing? I am creating a fictional place drawn on a person that changes through the conversation with the person. I don't pre-plan them, I don't design them, I don't sketch them out, I start drawing when I see the person and I start planning. I'll ask them where in the world they want their map, things that are important to them, aspects of their life, sometimes they're around scars, sometimes they're around self-image issues. And I use a variety of materials from non-toxic water-based acrylic pens to professional grade um, cosmetics. Waterproof eyeliners are a good tool if you want to draw on yourself and you want it to come off. Um, don't use Sharpies, don't use anything toxic. So these are professional um, body paints. And here's a very quick hyperlapse of one I did for Instagram because me and Instagram have an interesting relationship doesn't know how to categorize my art, because it's not a portrait, there's no heads in it, everyone's anonymous. And yet, there's a human body, and it's often nude, so I get dinged for inappropriate behavior. Um, and each map is very personal. This one is set in Florida, so the water and the, the landscape of the canals was very important to this person. This was actually done as a performance. Um, he's a, a dancer and about the best posture I have ever seen. So in a crowd like this, I was doing a live map while doing a demonstration, while doing a presentation, and he was walking around the room. And he was just so, I can't even mimic it, he was so graceful. Um, but the map becomes that personal. And I don't know where the map's going. It's a real challenge as a cartographer to not pre-plan and to not know where it's gonna end up. Sometimes we run out of time. Like, okay, eight hours is up, we should probably go home. <laughs> can't come back tomorrow, you can't continue it. Um, so the maps have developed from drawing on a person to occasionally drawing on two people. So now two friends want their friendship connected between them. So that's West Virginia. Mountains, valleys, legs. Um, but very little human interaction. So depending on the person, some people don't like settlements and don't like humans. Is that fair to say? Some of us like to live in our own little world. So mapping on someone takes me out of control of the end result. I don't know where it's going to go. What happens if I make a mistake? What is a mistake in a fictional map drawn on a person? 
normally a smudge. So kind of makeup remover, remove it. Yes, uh, this was drawn 10 days ago and it's set in Iceland. And they specifically wanted a contour map. So using the literal terrain of a body as contours, which is easy in one dimension. What happens when they turn over? Where's up gone? So another challenge as a cartographic rule, there is no north, there is no up. Most of my maps don't have text on them. Because if you put text on, you've now limited the plane of the photograph. You've limited the possibilities. Again, with a thousand photographs, I don't want them all in the same pose because that's also limiting the, limiting the person. Most people have never been drawn on before. A lot of the people I draw on have never been naked in front of a stranger before. So these aren't all good friends of mine. These are people who have commissioned me to draw a map or have volunteered because there's a, a personal reason they want to volunteer. This one actually I decided to color the mountain peaks snow. So the part of Iceland. There are two roads on it and three settlements that mean something to this person. Iceland is their favorite place they've ever been. They have a challenge to get to, I think, 150 countries before they were 40, and they're at about 130. So to pick Iceland as their favorite country was then very meaningful to them. And their quote, once we finished it, well, that was delightful. It's like, <laughs> okay, thank you. Some texture and details. And I've had conversations with a few people this week, and no, we're not going to guess what body parts they are, except that's my knee. Um, different parts of the body act differently to the same paint. So you can put a paint on a shin where there's very little muscle, and it acts one way. You put that same on a larger muscle or somewhere where the skin's looser, acts completely differently. And layering is possible in some parts of the body uh, and not others. So. A lot of people come into this with a weird expectation. Some people are intimidated. The first 30 minutes is strange because, I don't want someone phoning me. Um, I'm examining people in a way they've never been looked at before. If you're lying naked, there's a vulnerability to that. I am aware that I'm a 50 year old white guy, often drawing on a 25 year old female, and they're alone in my studio. So that vulnerability is very important and I take their comfort very seriously. I ask so many questions and explain a lot. This is what it's gonna take. How are you comfortable with this? At any point you can say no. Bring a friend. So I've had people come with friends. Um, I've had people come bringing their makeup assistant. Someone's holding their hair out of the way. So the conversations that happen are often very revealing, very open. And someone told me I was a cross between their therapist, hairdresser, and yoga instructor. <laughs> they lie on a massage table. The focus is on them for hours on a time. And then I ask them to get in poses. So they're now moving. And then they're self-conscious. Now the cameras come out. And I take all the photos myself, copyright reasons. If I drew a map on Ross, someone else photographs it and asks him to move, that photographer owns 50% of the artwork. So copyright in your work when you're working with someone else is a thing, but also the person's comfort. If I've drawn on you for six hours, you're comfortable with me. Someone else comes in the room, the dynamics have changed. So I'm very conscious of, of people's comfort levels. So just depending on the paints, metallic paints look great. And some of the textures change. So you can see the purple paint, the lavender, kind of pulls and pulls the moisture out of the skin, whereas the silver doesn't. And you can get really close and start seeing mountains within the terrain within the terrain. So macro photos are amazing with this. This is someone who had been picked on a lot of their life. Their breasts were too large. They weren't even. People had made fun of them. And that was their comment when they saw the photos. They brought people into my studio and pointed to them on the wall and said, that's me. Which Again, very validating to have someone who had image issues come in and then advocate your work for you. Two yoga instructors, both in their 50s, both very comfortable with each other, but they wanted this new experience. So they played with the, the interplay between themselves, completely accidentally kind of national flag colors of somewhere you can think of. So they felt like that strengthened their friendship. How often do you spend six hours naked with your best friend? <laughs> A 
and have someone else in the room, <laughs> and that person's drawing on you. Um, this one was even more personal. This is a person, um, her word, she grew up in a cult. She had no control or dominion of her own body. She was told who she could talk to, what she could do, what she could wear, who to date. She came to me and said, I want to claim my body back. Can this be part of my journey? So we set up the room. So I left the room while she took her clothes off. I didn't see her front. We drew this map set in, on a California coast. She was happy. By the end of it, she was just walking around topless and had relaxed to that point. She said, can we do this again and draw more of me? So this was part of her journey to claim back her body. And then a little different, that's actually a map. <laughs> all all minor maps, that's a real place. So this was a strange commission. Someone in London commissioned me to draw a map of where they live on another person for their own wedding gift, for their partner. <laughs> so they paid me from England. So then I've got to find a friend who's willing to be drawn on and you'll notice the left breast actually matches bank, the part of London where all the roads come together, the river's there. That was the hardest map I've ever drawn on a person, to draw an accurate map on the curves of a body representing somewhere that's important to them. I fictionalized the arm because I was tired. <laughs> okay, so can they be permanent? The one on the left was drawn on someone, Made it up as I drew, no pre-planning. They loved it enough, and it's permanent. On the right leg is a tattoo. On the left leg, the right side. And I think the tattoo artist did an amazing job. I had to learn that you can't tattoo certain thicknesses of lines because the tattoo will thicken over time. I didn't know that. I now know that. So a year later, I went back and saw this person again. And we said, what if we add the things that we didn't add, but we knew were there? So we added the water the parks, the zoos, the cemeteries, and then we added the edge of pavements. So on the right is a complete map. The original one was just black work, so it was just the building outlines. And their quote was, this has changed the way they interact with the world. They're very self-conscious, always dressed, covering their legs. People made, well, cat calls, tease them about their hair. Now people say, that's really cool, what's that? So another permanent tattoo. And in the interest of time, that's my drawing and that's the tattoo. Is that human terrain? Little character called Manny, <laughs> who travels around with me and I drew on them. Um, so that's what I've done, but how has it impacted me? So this is a map that was in the map gallery last year. I don't know if any of you saw it at Nasus. But what I didn't say was that was a self-portrait. So one of the things I've learned is, how do you become vulnerable? And also, how can I possibly ask someone else to put themselves out there if I'm not willing to do the exact same? And I think that applies to cartography and ideas in general. Are you willing to risk something? And the answer is, yeah, you should. You should put yourself out there. Am I very confident in my body? No. Have I posted that picture in a gallery without my hands in that position? Yes. That's nerve-wracking. Invite 50 of your friends to come round and parts of you are bright green. <laughs> so in the map gallery is the one on the left and the one on the right is just to prove it did go all the way round and it did take eight hours and I drew that four days after breaking my leg. She was about the best person possible to do that. So accommodating. You know when you go to your hairdressers and you're, you're moving your head around for them? That's how she was. She was just, what if I do this for you? What if you sit down and I put my leg there? Also in the map gallery, I do real places occasionally. <laughs> That's Alabama State Parks, which is in the hotel in Gulf Shore State Park. And then if you can read Farsi, you can see a map set in Iran, City of Blazing Stars. And that's all my contact information. I have some postcards up here if anyone wants to come up and talk to me. Also, if you want to talk to me tonight, there'll be an evening event that we can um, partake in. Now, if you have Questions. There isn't time now. Oh, I've got time for a question. <laughs> Any questions? We could do like two questions. Anton. This might be a silly question, but I'm curious if you've ever considered the maps on animals. The, the question was have I ever considered maps on animals other than human? I was offered a cow once. 
That's a strange way of answering that. I was offered a cow to draw on, but the cow couldn't sign a release contract. So only people over 19, because in Alabama you have to be 19 to sign a contract. So I didn't. So people have offered me babies, and no, I'm not doing that. Either. Yes. The question is, what's the smaller scale? Can I draw as small as a fingerprint? That's the, a knuckle. Um, the materials aren't good enough to draw that fine on a person. Um, so the finest pen is not that fine, so it doesn't work. What I have thought about doing is photographing those and then drawing on the photograph, but then I'm removed from the person and it's not as intimate and it's not as collaborative or responsive to that person. Cool. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thanks, David.